I'm gonna make this short little video to kind of show you some of the skill sets and tools that you're gonna need um, in terms of using maps for the site description and for your biodiversity project in general. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and show you. Um, you need to go to Google Maps. You can either um, just search for maps or you can just go to maps.google.com. Um, and it's gonna pull up this um, interface that you've probably used before when you're like looking up something to go eat or someplace to go hang out. Um, but we're gonna need to use it in terms of looking for parks or looking for areas and measuring those distance specifically. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you one of the, um, the park that I want you to use to compare for your site description and that's Walnut Creek. So I'm gonna go in here and type in Walnut Creek Metropolitan Park. Um, and it's gonna pull it up here. Now I do, and you're probably used to this left-hand side navigation bar. It's gonna provide you a little bit about the park um, and such. I do wanna point out here, they do have images. So when you're going to look at your park, or you're trying to figure out that physical variable, um, or you're looking at things, um, or whatever you might be investigating, you're probably not gonna be able to physically go to the park in order we expect that. So definitely use these images to kinda of see what the park's like to get a feel for the park um, in terms of the ones you are picking. Now I'm gonna close this sidebar here so we can see the map in general. Now I want you to know this map here is of course software generated map. It's trying to pick where a neighborhood versus like this foresty area starts. Um, I just don't want you to always assume that that's correct because it's not always, sometimes it is absolutely right on par. This park it does a relatively good job. So if I switch it down here to satellite, um, I can see that that's roughly the terrain of the park line up with um, this green area. Um, but not necessarily always. So when you're trying to measure um, the size of your park or distances in the park, please make sure that you use satellite image so that you're definitely knowing or you definitely know where the edges of that park reside because this doesn't really show edges. It's just showing you where there's mostly trees. Um, so check that out. And sometimes you're gonna have to estimate where you think it ends and where it starts. So feel free to do that. If you have questions, please let us know, and we're happy to help you out through that. Now, the other thing that you're gonna to need to know how to do is measuring distances. So I'm gonna keep it here just so that it's a little easier to see. Um, if you right click, you'll um, open up this other menu of options you can do, but we wanna focus on measure a distance. So when I'm asking you to locate landmarks or major highway distances, um, you can go ahead and do that in Google. So if I'm gonna click this, I see that it already creates this icon and I'm gonna put it right at what I think is the center of the park. I'm gonna measure, as long as I'm consistent where I'm measuring from, and I'm gonna measure to the nearest large highway. So I see I've got 35 on this side and um, Mopac on the other side. So I could choose one of them. I'm going to choose um, the distance to 35. Let's say the shortest distance, somewhere probably right, right there. Um, and so I can see that it's just, um, that would be what, west? Just west of 35, and it's roughly 1.21 kilometers. Um, so that would be a good way for me to indicate location of the park. I might also want to use it for um, Mopac, so I could just drag this over here. Um, and get that distance as well. Now something else you might need to do is um, actually measure um, areas or um, locations in general. So I, let's do that again. So I'm gonna right click it and click measure distance and let's measure just the perimeter of this park roughly. I'm not gonna do the whole thing. Um, and I just click and then click again to keep adding on the dimensions to this shape. And we'll say we'll go down here somewhere and then I just bring it back to connect it. When I connect it, Google automatically provides me with the total area measured as well as the total distance or perimeter of that shape. Now I want you to note in this class we've been talking about ratio scale problems and how do we convert um, or how do we use dimensional analysis analysis to convert between units of in reality versus in the photograph. Um, I want you to pay attention. This is already converted for you. So Google is already using that calculation in order to measure what they're getting as the scale of this image to reality. So um, it's already telling you that. Now also pay attention that in terms of planet Earth, our expectation is that we're not using meter squared so that you go ahead and convert that to hectares um, because that's an easier measure, measurement when we're talking about large areas. Now that's how you're gonna measure distances. Um, and you can do that, um, or measure distances when you're looking for landmarks, uh, help locations, maybe you're looking at distance from water, um, distance to urbanization, distance to um, 
what have you, that's going to be your key factor in measuring. Now the other component is kind of showing us where your parks are in relation to Austin. And you can do this a few ways. I'm going to recommend using not um, Google for that. You can use something called uh, Scribble. I think it's Scribble. Scribble Maps um, here. And I'm just going to hit Create Map. Now of course it's going to want you to like sign in, create a, an account. You do not need any of that. Just exit out of it. We don't need it for our purposes. And what you need to do is indicate where your parks are um, in relation to Austin. So I'm going to just go ahead and pull up Austin, Texas, so it kind of zooms in for me. We're just going to hit continue, and hopefully it'll keep letting us work. And we're going to zoom out a little bit here so that I have Austin, right? Um, let's put it right here, something about that size. Um, that's about the image of Austin I want you to submit to me. And we're going to go ahead and click hybrid. I want you to change it to terrain because it's not as busy and we can kind of see where your parks are. Now for you to tell me where your parks are, you're going to go ahead and then search it again. So let's put Walnut Creek Metropolitan again. There you go. We're just going to keep doing this because we're not upgrading. Um, and you'll see here, this is that park we were just looking at on Google Maps because this is still the same thing. Um, I don't want you to click add a marker. I want you to exit out of that. And I want you to go up here and you'll see a marker tool. If you click that marker tool, it'll give you um, different markers to use. My advice would be to label your parks using these indicated numbers. So you can use blue, green, red. Um, or white, white's probably not going to show up too well, to indicate your park. So I'm going to click one, and I'm going to put that marker right here. And I'm going to label it Walnut Creek. Oops, sorry. Um, see. Now that's going to be my first park. Now I'm going to go ahead and go up here and click back to um, move so I'm not adding any more markers. And let's say I need to add another marker. We're going to put it on, I don't know, let's do Zilker Park. Let's say that's our other um, location here. I'm going to exit out, and I'm going to choose, so you can see here in Zilko Park is also very um, uh, gray, even though you know that that's also still just a lawn out here on Zilker. And I'm going to go back to my markers. I'm going to call this one Label 2, and I'm going to place that on Zilker Park. Um, and now the key, let me hit Save. And then I'm going to just zoom back out to that location that I kind of showed you. So I'm going to click back to hand and zoom out here to where I can, it keeps wanting me to save passwords for these, who knows why, to roughly about um, somewhere where I can see there, about right there. I can see in relation to Austin downtown, this is where my two, my two parks, if I'm doing, you should have three, um, my two parks are. And then when you, I would don't export it because that requires um, like money. Don't use money. Just screenshot this and then crop it to only contain the map. Um, so then you can just copy and paste that in there. And I think that's an easier way. You can also use um, Google's My Maps, My Maps Google um, here, and it'll also allow you to create maps. It's a little um, challenging, um, but you can still use it to create markers and do the exact same thing. Um, but that would be my expectation. And then when you put the screenshot in your introduction research plan or your site description, just make sure that you indicate, well, icon one is representing Walnut Creek, icon two is representing um, Silker Park. And that'll be enough for me um, or your instructor to know what's actually um, being indicated by the map above. Um, and that's kind of how you need, or the few skills that you need in terms of Google um, Maps in terms of how to measure distances how you're going to create maps to take screenshots so that we have them so we kind of know where your parks are and your research, whoever's reading your research knows where those parks are. And hopefully that helps. Of course, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to one of us.